Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and um, we're going to take a look at Revit MVP 2012 and uh, using the Copy Monitor tool. The Copy Monitor tool is also used in Revit Structure and Revit Architecture and is a fantastic tool for uh, collaboration. So let's say I'm the mechanical engineer, I'm going to create a new file based on my system's default template I'm going to hit OK. I have the architectural model that I want to actually reference in, but the architect has some datums or levels and information that I need to use. So let's go to the insert, let's link in the Revit model from the architect and let's take in the architectural layout. So what the copy and monitor tool, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to copy and monitor the levels. So I'm going to pop it out to the east view and you can see that the architect has level 0 and level 1. He also has a couple other levels for um, various ceilings. But you can see within my model, I have level 0 and level 1. So what I'm going to do is actually use the copy monitor feature in here. So on the collaborate um, tab on the ribbon, we're going to go to copy monitor and we're going to use select link. So we'd use this to select our current linked architectural plan. And you can see in the contextual editing in the ribbon, freeze up. So. I don't want to use the copy feature, I simply want to monitor in this instance because I already have these two levels in. So as soon as I click monitor, it's looking for the element in my model to be monitored. So I'm going to pick level 1 and I'm going to tie that into the architect's level 1. I'm going to pick up my level 0 and I'm going to tie that into the architect's level 0 and hit finish. So basically I'm monitoring um, these two atoms, these two levels. How do you know an item's being uh, monitored? If you click on it, you get to see the wee monitor symbol as shown. So if you pick on my level zero, the wee monitor symbol is there indicating that's being monitored. In another case, the architect has some levels I haven't put in. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to use the copy monitor. So uh, we're going to go to select link. Let's pick up our link. This time I'm going to go to copy. I'm going to pick that level. I might get a soft warning just about the style there, that's fine, I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm going to pick the other levels. So these levels are physically being copied, they're going to be available for edit um, to me. So if I hit finish, again you'll see they're physically in my model. Um, and they are being monitored as well. So if I click on the link, again, you'll get to see the monitor symbol. So I didn't need to use the actual monitor in that case. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level in here and I'm going to reference it and monitor it to level zero from the architect. So let's go to the architect. Let's go to uh, create a level. I'm going to do this by an offset. So I'm just going to say pick, say minus 1065. And again, I'm going to hover over here. I want to populate the bubble in here and let's just drag that along and we'll keep that as level 2, we'll call that level 0 reference. I'm going to rename the corresponding views. I'm going to go to collaborate, copy monitor and select the link. So I'm going to go to monitor pick my level and pick the architect's reference level and finish. So in this case what we have, we've got level 1 in my model um, monitored um, based on the architect's levels and we've got this level uh, 0 reference level referenced against level 0 in here. So we're going to save this drawing, so this file, so I'm going to save this project out. Let's pop it out the desktop. We'll call it MEP School Project. Okay, so now what we're going to do, once we've saved, we're going to say we're the architect and we're going to make a couple changes uh, to the level. So I'm going to quit out of this project. I'm going to go to open and we're going to open up the architectural layout. Um, you don't want to copy monitor too much. I mean, ideally this is actually for the likes of structural columns uh, or main structural grids, main structural walls, uh, levels, etc. in here. You don't want to overcomplicate the copy monitor functionality. So I'm in at the architect's uh, project. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. We're going to call this GND floor because that's a convention he wants to use. It's fine. And we're going to call level one. We're going to call that first floor FLR. Um, but what we're going to do with our first floor, we're going to pop the height down to 3.8 meters. That's going to change. Um, that's going to calculate all our different ceilings or slabs because it's going to adjust the whole model. Again, it's a very powerful feature in Revit. A change in one view is represented by a change in all views. So I'm happy with that. I'm simply going to save. So I've changed the actual first floor level. I've also renamed those two levels. So mechanical engineer, as soon as he clicks on his project, it opens up. He's going to get a warning saying you need to do a coordination review. Oops, sorry, wrong drawing. We're on project. We bring in our MEP school project. Um, so the mechanical engineer, he'll actually get a notification here. As you can see, instance of linked to Revit file needs coordination review. That's fine. So that's clearly indicating I need to coordinate the review here. So you can see the changes coming through from the architect, first floor, etc. But you can see my levels have moved. That's because I need to do coordination review. If I go to collaborate in here, we can go to coordination review and select the link. So I'm going to click on my link file and again you'll see this coordination review in here. Um, to see the actual items being changed or the elements being changed, I simply click and it's highlighted. So you can see these are name changes. And this one here is where I've moved the level by 200. The nice thing about this is I've got my actions, what I can actually do in here. I can postpone, reject, accept the difference or rename. Again, in this case, I'm going to accept this and just say the rename. Rename and rename. And I'm going to accept the change in the level. If I wanted, I could add in a comment. Um, and this is quite important because we can actually create a report from that. So we can go into create a report. I'm going to pop it out to my desktop. So that's created a report and we can keep this. And we can keep this and use this. Um, to review um, if any meetings etc in there or we can keep it for important changes throughout the project so again um, on my desktop in here you can see my MEP school project so I'm going to double click and let that open up in the background comes in as HTML you can see the Revit coordination report and you can see my comment in there so it's a very powerful feature for coordination reviews again you can print this out bring it in the meetings or you can keep it for the track major changes so once I'm happy, I'm going to hit apply and OK. As soon as I hit apply and OK, we do see the changes in my model. Yes, I want to rename my corresponding views. So it's saying, do you want to rename my plan views? So what we've actually got is my views in here have actually changed. So you can see my first floor has dropped down to now 3.8 meters. You can see my ground floor is physically changed in here. You can see all this information is very important from a coordination point of view has changed and updated. Um, that's the copy monitor uh, feature in Revit MEP. Same applies to uh, Revit Structure. I'm David Golly from Pentagon Solutions. Thanks for your time.